Callista has always been a rather niche AD carry, mostly played by one tricks. Her unique mechanics make it a little more difficult to add her to your champion pool, but in this Callista guide you get everything you need to know in less than 5 minutes. Callista's power is heavily skewed towards the early game. You have to be able to capitalize off of every single mistake your opponents might make during the lane phase, and then snowball the game from there. She is immensely powerful at that stage of the game however, so finding these openings is easier than with most other AD carries. Because of this, and also because of the nature of Callista's abilities, she best synergizes with tank supports who bring their strong engage potential to the table. Blitzcrank, Maokai and Nautilus for example can lock an opponent down, enabling you to follow up with Callista's crazy early game damage output. Since Callista's passive allows you to dash in any direction at the same time you fire a basic attack, you can further close the gap while still maintaining maximum DPS, making it impossible for the opponent to escape from an all-in fight. Callista's Q is a rather basic skill shot with solid range. It works with your passive too, which means you can also input a movement command during its cast animation for a small jump. It also keeps traveling when it kills its target, allowing you to poke enemies even when they hide behind low health minions. This will be very important in a second, but first let's talk about Callista's W. Callista always starts the game with a black spear in her inventory, which you should use as soon as the match starts to make your lane partner your oath sworn ally. W is the first ability that rewards you for doing this, as you passively deal a ridiculous amount of percent max health bonus damage to your enemy when both you and your oath sworn ally attack them at the same time. This is what really takes your 2v2 potential to the next level, but W also has an active effect which can provide vision in the river or jungle, and this can help you to detect a gank or a subscribe button every now and then. However, Callista's most powerful spell is her E. Each of Callista's attacks apply an E stack to her target, and pressing E consumes all stacks to deal bonus damage depending on the number of stacks you applied. This makes your all-in damage deceptively high as it is very difficult for your enemy to assess how much damage they are still going to take from Callista's E, and since you get a cooldown and mana refund when you kill with the spell, E is also a good tool for wave clear. However, there is a very deadly interaction with E and Callista's Q. As I've said, Q keeps traveling when it kills its target, allowing you to also hit targets behind the first one. Most importantly though, Callista also transfers all E stacks from the first target to the second whenever this happens. When you do it correctly, you can stack up your E on a minion, only to kill it with Q while applying all the E stacks to the champion behind that minion. Callista's ultimate is another reason why she will always be played in a 2v2 lane and why she prefers having a tank support by her side. You pull your oath sworn ally towards yourself, allowing them to click in any direction to dash to that location, knocking up all enemies in their path. Or in other words, your tank support ally who is already a CC machine now gets a free engage with a free knockup which is the strongest form of crowd control in the game. Obviously you will not always get a tank support player in your random solo queue lobbies. When your oath sworn ally is not one of those champions who thrive when they are in the middle of a fight, Callista's ultimate is still highly useful since you can cast it to give them a free disengage when they are caught out of position. All these tools make your lane and 2v2 incredibly strong, but Callista is balanced because her passive also reduces both her attack damage and attack speed scalings. Therefore you have to make the early game count, and you do this with the early game focused rune page of Hail of Blades, Taste of Blood, Eyeball Collection and Treasure Hunter with Triumph and Legend Alacrity secondary. Hail of Blades is a lot of upfront DPS and skirmishes, and the fact it doesn't need to scale with levels like other keystones makes it just perfect for Callista's game plan. The minor runes of Taste of Blood, Triumph and Legend Alacrity are heavily early game focused too, but you do not merely want to win lane, you also have to get as much mileage out of it as possible. Eyeball Collection and especially Treasure Hunter help a ton in that regard, providing additional advantages to you on top of the kill and assist gold itself. You rush boots on Callista for the longer dash range on your passive, and always build the core items of Shield Bow, Runan's Hurricane and Ginzo's Rageblade in this exact order. Shield Bow protects you as you are forced to aggressively jump forward during fights for maximum E stacks, and Hurricane is a must have because it lets you apply your E to multiple targets at once. Callista cannot rely on big individual crits due to her passive damage nerf, so converting that crit chance to on hit damage with Rageblade is mandatory for maximum DPS. Your last two item slots should be used for either more on hit items or for defensive utility items, depending on whether not killing your enemy fast enough or getting killed by the enemy is the more important issue in the current game. If you want to have a more in-depth look at Callista's intricate mechanics, just click the link on your screen right there.